Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and I am the crochet designer slash business strategist here behind A Crafty Concept. In today's video, I'm sharing an Instagram live replay that I did over on Instagram on for day four of crochet miss if you're not sure what crochet miss is i will link a video to the announcement video that i did a couple weeks ago i'm not sure what side of my head it will be linked on but it will be up here somewhere and you can check that out i will also put all kinds of information for you down below in the description in today's live we're going to be making clear cozies that are little coffee cup cozies to help keep your hands safe from either the hot temperature or the wet if you drink iced coffee like I do. This is a super easy, super quick pattern. It's gonna be really fun to make here live with everybody over on Instagram. We do have a freebie that goes with today's pattern. It is a set of coffee cup templates that you can cut out and put your cozy on to show your customers what they are in your markets. You can also use them to show your customers what they are in your photos, like your Etsy listing photos. You can use them as packaging. So you could put them on the little coffee cup cozy and then put it in a little cellophane bag, tighten it up, drop it in a poly mailer, good to go for shipping. So there's lots of really pretty ways that you can use these. These were designed by Anna of The Naughty Boss and she is sharing them as in a crafty concept exclusive. So definitely click the link below to join the Crochet Miss VIP list and get the free freebie today and start receiving all of the other freebies for the rest of the 10 days. Today is day four. We got six days left after today. Let's go ahead and watch the Instagram live replay and see what all happened today. Hi friends. Welcome to day four of Crochetmas. I'm so excited. Today one, Today's one was way later in the day, so I've had to be waiting all day long to get to spend time with my favorite people. So I'm glad that it's finally 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we are finally able to go here live together and get ready to make a Claire Cozy. These are excellent makes. They're excellent for fall markets, holiday markets, summer markets, literally any time of the year you can market these things to be seasonally appropriate. And I think the verse that I think that is really special because if you it's kind of sometimes some of the products that you sell in your shop, like the crafty boho stockings are very seasonally specific, but it's nice to have some things in your shop that can be seasonally appropriate no matter what the season is. And Claire Cozies are definitely one of those products. So we are going to go over. Hi. Oh, hello. 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 Welcome. Welcome. We are going to go over some housekeeping and then we're going to start the live so first things first on day one we made crafty boho stockings together they were fun they were cute we gave some tips and tricks for how to crochet with fur yarn and we had a blast this replay is now available on youtube there is the never before seen footage of my other phone angle and there are spanish subtitles for my spanish speaking friends who have been joining us live so i'm going to try to add the spanish subtitles subtitles to all of my videos, but I was thinking specifically for the people that were hanging out here that don't necessarily speak or understand English, it might give them a little bit more of an insight as to what was going on. On day two, we made little Christmas lights. I have been seeing these all over my Instagram, you guys. You have been tagging me. Good morning. You've been tagging me in your pictures. You have been sharing them. I I'm obsessed with that. That is my favorite thing that can happen all day long is when you guys tag me and share your pictures of your makes that you made using my patterns. Totally yardsome. Welcome. I'm glad your craft show did good. That's really awesome. I love that. I always talk to the vendors when I go to craft fairs. I can't help it. Entrepreneurs are my favorite people. So I just go to all of them and probably buy something, at least something small, like all the time. I love craft fairs. Um, so this was day, I said day two, didn't I? This was day three. <laughs> Tricked ya. This was day three. So sorry. This was day two. <laughs> right? Yeah, this was day two. This was day three. Day two, we made crafty facial rounds. These are great for removing makeup or rinsing your face with water if you've got soap on your face. You can also use these to like wipe out the toothpaste in your sink when you're done brushing your teeth. I use them for everything in my bathroom that my bathroom needs. Um, sometimes I use them to remove fingernail polish, but then usually that one has to be thrown away. Um, but you can use them for all kinds of different things, but they're designed specifically for removing makeup with just warm water. And then day three, we made the Christmas lights and you guys are tagging me and I'm obsessed and I love it. Today we are making 
Claire Cozies. This one was made with dishy cotton in the baby pink color. I don't know the exact color of the, the, the cotton, but it's the only baby pink that they have. And it has this really cute coffee queen tag that I got from Angie and Britt. This one is, this is Bernat blanket yarn and dishy cotton for this one. This is a faux suede tag, so it's not made from animals, and it just goes on with this little um, trivet or whatever it's called. You just it's got like a like a long part that you put through and put it in a hole on this side, and you screw it in nice and tight, and that's it's so fast and easy. I love a quick tag because sometimes tagging your things takes forever. And it's, it makes a big impact, so they're, they're good to put on. But this is very, very quick. And I really love the folded over look on a coffee cup. I think this looks excellent. I also wanted to show you that I did make a worsted weight Claire Cozy. Um, this one was made with a hand-dyed yarn. So it's a very thin worsted weight. And I think it's acrylic. Well, if it's hand-dyed, it can't be acrylic, can it? I, I don't even know. It's just a random skein that I have. I think it's a, it feels like acrylic, but it might be something else. I'm not sure. Um, that would be adorable, Story Knits. Love that idea. But this one came out a little bit smaller. I just wanted to show you that. It's the same pattern, same hook. It just came out a little smaller because the yarn itself was really thin. But you can use worsted weight yarn if you don't want to use cotton. Or you can use acrylic, I mean, if you don't want to use cotton. I've seen people do that. It works out just as fine. I use mine specifically for my iced coffee. So they get they absorb good with cotton. And iced coffee sweats, right? So that's why I use cotton for mine. But you can absolutely use Worsted, I mean acrylic too, both of them will turn out beautifully. Let's go over our giveaway things for today and then the rules for the giveaways and then we will get started. So we're going to be doing four giveaways today. I actually updated my, my basket here so I can have a bigger one instead of a squished one. So I, I used my large size nesting basket for the numbers. We're not doing a giveaway right now. I'm just telling you the rules about the giveaway. So how the giveaways work is you pick a number, 1 through 126, and then I draw that number, and then the first one to get the closest without going over, before I say stop, wins. Sierra, my virtual assistant, she's hanging out here today. She will be finding the correct comment and reaching out to the correct person. If she doesn't see your comment, we are giving grace. Instagram is super glitchy, and sometimes they just literally don't come through. If you feel like you won and didn't get the recognition, please send me an email, and we will work it out privately via email. I do have the giveaway rules right here that you guys can read, and I will try to put these on the screen every time we do a giveaway. The The last little bit about the giveaway is I need you to send me your information, and we've been, we've been struggling with this part. I need to know your name so I can put it on the shipping address or... Um, look at the list that Sierra gave me and make sure we're all on the same page. Your Instagram handle, what prize you won, like literally the prize. I need you to say, I won the PDF for the Coffee Cozy pattern, or I won the peace sign sticker, or I won the notebook, the, the Skeen Queens notebook. I need you to be very specific because some of these giveaway prizes from previous lives haven't been sent out yet. So I, I don't know what day they're on anymore. Some people still haven't contacted me. So I need to know, I need you to be as specific as possible. It's just going to make it faster for me to get your thing to you. Because if you don't include your specific details, I have to ask you and then wait for you to respond. And then you respond and then wait for me to see it. And then I see it. So then a, a couple days could go by before I send your prize out to you. So the only reason I need these details is to make it faster so you can get your prize faster. Um, but your name your Instagram handle, what prize you won, and where I need to send it, either your physical address or your email address. And now look, the lighting is different. There's like a shadow because it, the sun is going down already at three o'clock, which is insane to me. But that's why there's a bit of a shadow. If it gets really weird, I can try to close one of my curtains to see if that'll help. Now let's go ahead. I think that's all of the housekeeping things that we have to go over together. Let's go. Oh, I will for the giveaway. I will count down to 10 and then I will type the comment stop. And then any number that was guessed after my stop comment will not be included in that 
that one's drawing. You are welcome to play for all four giveaways. I hope that you do. It's okay if you win more than one giveaway. Totally fine. But we're just doing one number guess per giveaway. So you will get to guess a total of four numbers for the life of this video if you hang out for the whole time. So one guess per giveaway, four giveaways per live. You're welcome to enter all four, li or all four giveaways. It's going to be really super fun. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our pattern. So I'm going to be pulling it up from the internet, the glorious internet. If you go to craftyconcept.com, click the free patterns tab, then you'll be able to scroll until you see the coffee cozy picture. Click on the picture and then that will pull up the coffee cozy pattern. I know these ads aren't fun, but that is how I'm able to stay in business. So it's like just a necessary evil at this point, I guess. So materials for this pattern, we are going to be using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. That is the weird size from Clover and More. There's not a letter for this one. It just says seven, and then it says 4.5 millimeter. I don't understand why, but we. this is the one we're using for this pattern. When I made a bunch of them, this one was the one that fit a coffee cup the best. We're gonna be using cotton yarn for me, but you're welcome to use uh, acrylic if you'd like, and I'm gonna be using Dishy Worsted Weight in the color Clarity. It's a light gray color. I was gonna do black. Probably you would just need to go with what your yarn calls for story knits. If you can still use this size, that'll probably be best. If you use a bigger hook, your cozy might be a little bit bigger, which would be fine for the bigger sizes, but it might be too big for a tall. So you might have to play with it and do a whole bunch of different different scenarios. Would you suggest go up or down a hook size if you don't have it? Depends on your tension. If you have slightly loose tension, I would go down. If you have slightly tight tension, I would go up. Depends on your tension. Um, and we can measure this. Dishy is from We Crochet, and I do have a um, link to that. If you go to the link in my bio here on Instagram, which is a crafty concept dot com forward slash... Where's my forward slash? Forward slash crafty links. That's the link to my Instagram bio link. You can see on day, this is where you sign up to the email list. If you're not on the email list yet, that's how you get the freebies that we give out. And we do have a freebie for this pattern. Then these are some buttons that I have to get you to some things that you might get to quickly or regularly. There's some of my favorite things over on Amazon. Then here's a button to see my full Amazon shop, then some stickers, then we have my YouTube channel and the I Should Tay Facebook group, but then we have all of these here. And these are all affiliate links, so if you plan on purchasing any of these products or from any of these things, you can click on that link and it will take you to their website and anything that you purchase after you click on that link, I will get a small commission. But Dishy Cotton is from We Crochet, so you could just go up there and type in Dishy and you will find it. I'm going to close out these tabs so my internet doesn't panic while we're trying to go live here. Okay, I think that's everything. Let's grab our hook and our yarn, and we're going to start by making a slip knot. Oh, there is a gauge with this. The gauge is 15 single crochet stitches by 15 rows should give you a 3.5 by 3.5 square. So that's the gauge if you're trying out different hooks if you get frustrated with the hook that you try for this video and your thing comes out too big or too small, maybe for your next one you can check your gauge first and then decide if you need to go up or down a hook size or try a different yarn from there. But it's 15 stitches by 15 rows should be a 3 by 3 square. 3.5 by 3.5 square. Okay, um, let's make our slip knot. I'm going to do it one more time a little bit slower. Okay, now we are going to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we are going to skip the chain closest to your hook and single crochet seven back down the chain. So I like to go in the back bumps. We don't have to do that for this pattern though. We're just gonna single crochet back down the chain of our starting stitch, skipping this one, the one closest to our hook. We're gonna put our first stitch in this one right here. So we are going to insert into the stitch, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's our single crochet. You may have noticed that I yarn under 
Instead of the traditional yarn over, that's just how I taught myself. It gives me slightly twisted single crochets. It will not affect the finished functionality of the coffee cozy. You're welcome to yarn over or yarn under whatever's easiest and most comfortable for you. This is easiest and most comfortable for me. I'm not being intentional. It's just how I crochet. Chain one and turn our work. Now we are going to do rows two through 32. So we got 32 brim rows here, that's one. So for row two, we're gonna single crochet back down for seven stitches again in the back loop only. So if you're looking at the top of your row, normally we would go under both loops for our stitch. We're going to be going in the back loop only, which is the loop furthest from you as a person, the one furthest from your chest. So let's put in our yarn, I mean our hook, and insert into just the back loop, just like that. And that's where we're gonna place our single crochet, just like that. And then we're gonna single crochet all the way back down for a total of seven, going in the back loop only. One of the horses is acting really weird. He has been staring at a specific spot in the bushes for like 30 minutes, like a statue, and he's not even moving. Okay, last one. Now we're going to chain one and turn our work. We're gonna keep doing that until, oh, until we have 32 rows. So it's just gonna be like a little bit of a crochet, single crochet party real quick. And we're just gonna, it is a little weird. And he's, maybe he's sleeping. <laughs> maybe he just like fell asleep standing there. It looks like he sees something because his head's like kind of lower than it should be. So maybe he's just sleeping, but it does look funny. The horses crack us up. I'm gonna chat about them while we keep doing this. So I'm gonna start row three, back loop only, just single crocheting seven times all the way down. We're gonna do that for 32 rows. We'll do a few here together and then we'll do our first giveaway. Um, the other day, I don't know if I've even shared this story or not already, but a couple weeks ago, Gabe and Ava were outside practicing softball and one of the horses, I think it was the solid white one, not the one with the brown patches, starts jumping and bucking his feet and acting crazy. And Gabe looks over and they hear him tooting up a storm. Like he is just ripping off so many toots that are very loud. And he is like bucking and bouncing with every one of them. And it's like a whole symphony of toots. And we have all laughed so dang hard after like Gabe and Ava about peed on themselves because they saw it, but then they just told it to me. And to hear Gabe tell that story is hysterical because the way he does the toots, it, the toot sounds is so funny. But then after we talked about it, of course, TikTok listened in on our conversation. So now my TikTok feed is full of tooting horses and I laugh hysterically on every single one of them. It was so funny. Like horses, if you've not been around them, they like buck their feet when they toot or at least one foot like they just like go crazy to get them toots out and it it absolutely cracks me up it was so funny so we're just gonna keep doing single crochets in the back loop only this is a very peaceful pattern to me specifically because i've made six thousand clear bun beanies that's a, a sarcastic number it's probably not that many but it's close <laughs> Um, so, and it's the same pattern as the Claire Bun Beanie, it's just the numbers are different, basically. You do need Gabe to reshare it, because it was really funny. I'll try to see if I can get that for him. Get him to do that. He's not much on sharing things like that, but I can try. Maybe I can um, film him secretly and then get his permission after, so he doesn't know that he's being filmed. It would be so funny. Or maybe I can share it in the YouTube replay when I edit this video to put it on YouTube. But I have made so many of these and I can do this in my sleep, it feels like. Like I can close my eyes right now. I'm looking directly at the phone. I'm not even hardly, I'm looking at my stitches now, but I'm not even hardly looking at my stitches because I've just made so many of these at this point. So this is a very relaxing pattern for me. Same as the Claire Bun Beanie, which is good because I sold three Claire Bun Beanies today. Like it literally was like five days of nothing and then boom, three, all, all at the same time. But thankfully I do have a couple made already because I was just waiting for them to come through. I don't like selling any finished pieces in my shop. I want to take them out and not sell them anymore because it is limiting me because I still have like Christmas presents and stuff that I need to make. And so my crochet time should be dedicated to that. But I still make $30 a beanie. 
and they cost me like a dollar twenty five and forty two minutes of my life, and that's thirty bucks, and that adds up very quickly. So I still have them in there, even though I only sell a few. Attempt while getting my tattoo on Thursday. What? Where on your body are you getting a tattoo, if you don't mind to ask, or just a general location? Because I'm curious, maybe like a leg or a foot. If you're getting, um, if you're gonna think you can crochet while you get a tattoo, maybe your leg or your foot. I feel like your back would be difficult, unless maybe if you're sitting forward. But I still feel like that would be difficult. If what you lost count, how do you tell what row you're on? Okay, so let me show you how I count my rows. And I think I shared this in the Claire Bun Beanie pattern, but somebody was asking me the other day on Instagram too, so it would just be nice to share. So we're looking at peaks and valleys. This is a peak because it's up, and that's a valley because it's down low. So we're going to start, this is a valley, and that's a peak. So we've got one, two, three, down in the crack, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I've done 15 rows. I count the peaks and valleys here. Usually I just go like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14. 2, <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Right. Okay. But that's how I do it when I'm, especially when I'm making Claire Bun beanies. It's almost, it's crazy now because I'll try not to count at all. And then I'll see based off of the size, how many rows that I think it is. And sometimes I get it pretty spot on. Usually I'm like at 58 or for a Claire Bun beanie, there's 50. So usually I'm at 48 single, single crochet rows before, and then I'll count. And it's almost always at 48. And then I have to add two more to get to 50. I also know that when it's an even number, I am on the, when it's an even number, we're going to be on the opposite side of our starting tail. And when it's an odd number, we're on the same side as our starting tail. And we want to end on the opposite side. That way, when we join, when we join and seam up, our tail is on the inside near the, near the puffs and not on the outside near the opening of the thing. So that helps me too. I know that I need to end on a row opposite of where my tail is. That's where the even number rows will be. And that's another way that I can quickly gauge where I'm at. Look at that sunshine peeping through, being weird. I mean, not, not weird. It's just weird for us because we're not usually, usually we do them so early. What has been your favorite pattern thus far? The, the Christmas lights, the crafty facial round, or the boho stocking? Let me know in the comments. We have our small group coming over tonight, but I gave myself plenty of time to do this live before they got here. Stocking, mini stockings, two for the st Christmas lights. Stock oh my gosh, everybody's loving the stocking. Stocking and light bulbs. Oh, Sierra likes the stocking best. Oh, look at you guys, the stocking. Love the stocking. So do we love it because it's a Christmas pattern? What do we love about the stocking? Yeah, I'm right there with you, Dirt Road. I'm all about the practical. Why do we love the stocking so much? Is it because it's cute and tiny? Do we just love tiny things? Like small versions of usually bigger things? Let me know why we love the stocking so I can design more patterns like that. More patterns that have the same reason. The bobble stitch. We love the bobble stitch. I get that. I'm here for the bobble. Bobble baby bobble. Okay, let's... Cute tiny Christmas vibes. I'm, I'm here for it. We need cute tiny Christmas vibes. I sold a bunch of the facial rounds yesterday at my market as stocking stuffers. Good job. Cute, tiny, and practical. I love mini items. The bobbles. The bobbles are life. <laughs> Cute and tiny, and to be honest, a new tradition in our house is going to make one for our tree every year. That's really sweet. Stick a little gift inside, so we like that it is It is good for, um, oh, <laughs> a bobble addict, that it's good for gifting. Okay, like a gift package, pack packaging situation. Gotcha. Taking mental notes for next year's patterns. Okay, let's do, ooh, Facial rounds are the best sellers. Had 25, only two left. That makes my heart 
So happy. Thank you for sharing that. They are quick little gifts to give with a gift card or nail polish with a file. Absolutely. You could gift anything in these little guys. Small little things. Also, pro tip, if you're gifting something small, you can put tissue paper in the toe so the, the gift will stand out. Like if I was gifting this crochet hook, I could fill up the bottom the bottom with tissue paper so you can kind of see it sticking out a little bit and it doesn't shove all the way down in the toe like that, right? That's a little thing. I literally just thought of it <laughs> when I grabbed this because I was thinking of a fingernail file. You don't want it to like shove and be weird. You want to kind of get a little idea that there's gifts in there, right? So you could sh shove um, like a wad of tissue paper down in there. Just literally just came to that. Sierra, mental note for a good Instagram post later. Tissue paper in the stocking toes. All right, let's do a giveaway and then we will count our rows and see where we're at. Grabbing my box gonna put the sign nope gotta just have this here i will do my box off camera mixing it all up numbers one through 126 go ahead and start you have a couple of minutes here to guess what number you think will be drawn and the winner thanks girl the winner is going to get the pdf we're going to start with the pdf so the winner is getting the pdf of the pattern Keep those guesses coming on in. I'm going to keep mixing. I, I'm just mixing and mixing. I'm going to cover, but I'm just doing this. Mixing and mixing and mixing. And then I will actually draw on camera. I just don't, I want you to be able to see the rules. Just in case there is any confusion. Excellent. Okay, I'm getting ready to count to 10. And after that, I'm going to type the word stop. And then no more um, guesses will be accepted. Woo! 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, okay, S, T, O, P, post, okay, no more after that, we are going to draw, ready? Let's grab, I'm not even looking. And you can see it on the replay because of the second angle. Okay, what is this? We got 63. 63 is the winner. Sierra will find you. Give her peace and grace and patience, please. She is a rock star. Okay, let's go ahead and go see where we're at here. So we are at... 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 27. We got to get to 32. 27. This is going to be whoop, 28. My goodness. Twenty-eight, chain one and turn. Twenty-nine. Have we found our winner yet? Is the internet still good? It's all good. Okay, phew. Twenty-nine. Thirty. Hello, everyone that's joining. We're making Claire cozies. Claire coffee cozies. Ashley, what is the prize? It is the PDF, Sierra. The PDF to this pattern. Boop, 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 boop. I am way slow crochet. No, you're not, Mamacita 3. I have made muchas of these. Muchas. Very fast because I've made so many in my life. I'm very comfortable. Also, it's the hook. Muy bien. Hook. Clover Amor. How do you say the best in Spanish? This is the best. Muy bien. Okay. Mama Page makes. Congrats. Woohoo! Good job for winning the PDF. Let's count our things again. So we have. So we know this isn't right because this is on the opposite side of this. So I'm either one over or one under or lots over, but I'm going to do one more at least because my guess is that's 31. And this will be 32. El, El May. S.L. Mayer, is the J like an R sound or like an H? It's an H. El Mayor. El Mayor? Hor? Is that correct? 
or is it like yeah i think it's an i think it's an h oh man fedex is driving real slow he's probably trying to find my mailbox or like my address i don't know if we got anything from fedex correct may whore oh thank you okay uh let's count our stitches Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty two, twenty four, twenty six, twenty eight, thirty, thirty one, thirty two. Excellent. H sound. Okay, cool. Mayhor. Uh, Mayhor crochet hook. Okay. Now we are going to close the brim. So this is the brim of the coffee cozy. It's this part right here, which for me is the top, but a lot of people put them on cups this way. You do you, girl. I think they look great both ways. Um, so for me, it's the top. And now we're going to close close it by joining the first row with the last row. And I'm going to do it exactly like I said in the pattern so as to not create confusion because sometimes I can't explain something really well in words. So I do it differently than I normally do it because they both work. Um, but I don't want to do it the way I, I do it and it not be the thing. Yeah, so after finishing row 32, still do your chain and turn as normal. Fold the band in half with the right sides facing together. Working through both loops on each end of the band, we're going to slip stitch down. That's what it says to do. So normally I do something a little bit different, but we're just going to slip stitch these together. So I'm still connected back here. This is row 32, and this is row 1. I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch of row 1, and then I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch of row 32, and I'm going to place my slip stitch there. This gray looks so good on camera. Okay, so I'm going to grab my yarn and pull through the that stitch in the back, and then the stitch in the front, and then the loop on my hook. It can be the top or the bottom crochet cactus. I put them as the top, but a lot of people put them as the bottom. Totally depends, and you're, I mean, it can go either way. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into this second stitch, and then the same second stitch on the other row, going through both all those stitches at the same time. Gonna grab my yarn and go through all. I'm not sure why I said that, Jess. Um, it doesn't matter. What it's gonna be the right. It's gonna be the right side because we're gonna flip it right side out. I guess is why. I'm just letting you know that the slip stitching we're doing is on the wrong side, and then when you flip it, that's the right side. So if you're if you if you like like maybe if you did variegated yarn and it looks cooler on one side than it does the other side, and you want that to be your right side, you know that the right sides are touching each other. So right now we're looking at the wrong side, which is gonna be the inside of our cozy here. So then we're gonna go in the next space, into the next one that's exactly across from it, and slip stitch, we should have seven total slip stitches. I think this is four, five, six and seven okay now we are going to chain one and then flip it right side out so we're going to go like this and now our tail is on the inside and we're now looking at the right side of our work that's probably why i said that yay mamacita okay now we are going to single crochet around. So we're going to single crochet 32 stitches, which just means one time in each at the end of each row. So now we're looking at the raw edge of our work. So these are the ends of each row, and we're going to single crochet one time in each row's end. So I'm going to start right here really close to my chain one and place my single crochet. That's one, and we're going to do that all the way around. And I'm going to actually go... Um, I don't know, sometimes I go in between the stitch, sometimes I go around it. We're gonna go in between. So it doesn't really matter. It might look a little holy if you go around it and you might not like that. I think I went around it in this one. I mean, it's not bad, see, I did. It's not, it's not bad. So I'll go through the stitch for this one so we can compare. But that's one, this is two, this is three. And it's pretty obvious where that one's going around. I'm just going to go around, you guys. That's that's how I normally do it, and I think it looks fine. But it's, well, that one I'm going in. We're just going to mix it up. <laughs> I don't recommend that. I recommend choosing one and sticking with it. The good news is there's no increases right here, so you're just doing one time in each all the way around 
for a total of 32 single crochets. And I will have to recount these when I get back to the beginning. Whoop. Because I could easily add an extra stitch accidentally went up by my chain one. So we're going to single crochet all the way around. Okay. Almost. After we do our first row of puffs, we will do another giveaway. Actually, we'll wait a little bit. We just did one. We'll give it some time. And then we'll do another one. Almost there. Okay, so I think this will be the last one. That should be the last one. But you can see how you could accidentally think that needs to be one. But I believe that's our slip stitch. So I'm just going to count these and double check. We're going for 32. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Aha! Nice. Join into the top of our first single crochet. Right here, this was our first single crochet that we did. We're going to join into the top of the first single crochet. And then we are going to chain one. Ugh, perfect. Now we're going to start our first row of puff stitches. So we're going to puff stitch all the way around, going in every other space. It's going to give us a total of 16 puff stitches. And we're going to do it here on camera. Hang on, you get a sip of water. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Now, so our first puff stitch is going to go into the same space where we just joined. So we're going to go right back down into that same space, which was the top of the previous row. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the stitch, grab my yarn, pull up a loop. That's one. We're going to do that. I can't do it in slow motion. Hang on. Yeah, okay. That's one. We're going to do that four, three more times, giving us a total of four, four times. So yarn over into the stitch, grab your yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, into the stitch, grab your yarn, pull up a loop. Last one, we're going to go yarn over, into the stitch, grab your yarn, pull up a loop. Now you have all these loops on your hook. Let me count them for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I believe it's nine loops on your hook. Yarn over, Pull through all the loops together to complete your puff stitch. And then we're going to chain one to secure it. So with the bobble stitch, we do not chain one. On Like with the stocking pattern, we do not chain one on the bobble stitch. We do chain one on the puff stitch. And you can see what it looks like. Then we're going to skip this next stitch. We're going to skip this one. And the chain one accounts for that space. That's why it works. So we're going to skip this one and we're going to put a puff stitch in the next space. So I'm going to do this one really slow and then it'll kind of get super fast, but that's only because I've made a billion puff stitches in my life, right? I just have made so, so, so many of these because my shop went viral one winter and it was madness, but it was so much fun. Just like that. Go over all of them. And I think I do something super weird, which somebody uh, pointed out one time when I posted a slow-mo video. <clears throat> I think, and then I chained one. We're going to do that all the way around. I'm going to do the next one. I think I yarn under, insert, then I yarn, was that over? Is that over? Yeah. And then I yarn over to grab it and pull it through. Isn't that crazy? So it's like completely unique to my quirky personality so it makes perfect sense that my stitches would be so weird like this is just how I do it you do not have to do it as funky as me if you do not yarn over or under that way and your puff stitches still look great go for it mine this is just how I taught myself but also I am very quick at making puff stitches and it might be because of how I do it so I don't know but I'm gonna show you watch me mess up but I'm going to do the next one just at full speed. This is how I do it. This is how I be puffing all the time. And I think it might be because of how I grab my yarn. It's also because I've made so many of these. And it's also because of the hooks that I use. 
These hooks will help you speed up if you feel like you crochet very slowly. I tried to use a not clover and more hook one time and the slow the slowness was agonizing because I'm so used to my clover and more hooks. Like it it probably took me ten times I don't think FedEx can find where he's going. It took like ten times longer than it should have because I did not have a clover and more hook. So I definitely recommend now's the best time to get them because you can ask for them for Christmas. They will fit in your stocking. It's a good time to ask for clover more hooks. So we're going to continue to puff stitch all the way around until we have a total of 16 puff stitches. Three and four. Okay. Pretty, what are you making? We are making Claire cozies. These are little coffee cozies that hug around to go coffee cups. Trying to watch what I do in slow motion and I threw myself off. There is a slow motion. If you have an iPhone, there's a slow motion setting for the camera. That's how I did it. And then I watched it in slow motion because if I try to do it in slow motion, um, I also get psyched out. But you can just record yourself doing it in regular time with the slow motion camera and then you'll be able to see what you do. Working on a different project over here and I tried your technique with a double crochet and it is way faster. Game changer, huh? I don't know how I do double crochets, but I'm glad it worked for you. I don't know why I do it this way. It's it's not deliberate. It's just natural for me. Cute. Thanks, girl. They are, I just, I love them. I love having a, a little extra accessory. Okay. Also, Taylor of Taylor Lynn Crochets has felties that she sells now, and they're perfect for Claire Cozies. I made one with the um, Little Debbie Cake Christmas tree. I believe it's already on my Instagram feed if you want to go check it out. Okay, let's double check and make sure that we have... This is from Angie and Britt, that we have 16 puff stitches. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and I accidentally did an extra one, so I'm going to take that one out, and then we're going to join into the top, so that might have been my join, it looks like a stitch, did I accidentally do too many stitches, maybe my first one wasn't supposed to go so close, so maybe my first one was supposed to be over here, Maybe I did 33 stitches instead of 32, because that is definitely where one should go, but we're going to not... We're not going to do an extra one because I don't want to, let me see how this looks. I'm going to join to the top. If it's too holy, I might have to frog it. Chain one. Yeah, see how, see how like bunched up that is? So I'm going to have to frog it and see e either I did 33 single crochets around the border instead of 32 or I just started in the wrong stitch. So, so sorry. What price would you sell Claire Cup Cozy for? Why don't you guys just debate that in the comments? Because it's going to be better to get information from a lot of people than just one person. Because um, marketing research is a part of finding the right price. And I will redo this row. Let me double check my stitches real quick. Y'all, this is real life. This is actually live and actually happening. I'm, I'm hoping I did 33 stitches instead of 32. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three. I did do too many. I add I squeezed in an extra one. That was the problem. I squeezed in an extra single crochet. I told you that part is hard to see because of the way that the slip stitch is done and the way that we join in everything. So now I'm going to join to the top of my first single crochet. I'm going to place my first puff stitch back in the top of my first single crochet. And then we are going to get ready for the next round. Next row, excuse me. That is my bad. Hopefully it doesn't give us too much of a time problem. Why don't we, are we still talking about um, prices for a little bit? I'll give you guys a couple more minutes to do that. I don't want to um, mess it up with doing another giveaway while you're trying to talk prices because that would be confusing. But whenever you guys are done talking prices, we can, um, I think anywhere from eight to $15 would probably be a good price range. It depends on you, your brand, your why, your ideal customer, 
where your market is at or if you're selling online, what kind of yarn you use, if you use a tag or not, how long it takes you to make one. Like the, it's so, there's so many things that can go into that and nobody is doing it wrong. Okay. Nobody's doing it wrong. If, if somebody's selling theirs for $1 because that speaks to their why, that's totally fine. Their ideal customer is not your ideal customer. They are not taking sales from you because your ideal customer is going to not want to spend $1. They're going to want to spend more than a dollar. So you don't have to get upset or get stressed out or think that you're losing out on something because you're not. Most likely, they wouldn't have bought from you anyway, even if that $1 person wasn't there because they are $1 people and that's totally fine and that's good and everybody sees value in different things differently and there's nothing wrong with that. You're also able to sell these for 20 bucks if you want to. If your shop blew up and the demand for yours is really, really high and you want to sell them for 20 bucks and all of them come with like a freebie or something and you're pricing accordingly, that's totally fine. You do you. Everybody else is going to do them and everybody is going to be happy and good and, and find their own path. It's totally fine. Let's double check that, make sure that we're on 16, and then we will do a giveaway. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Perfect. This is a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. It's the odd size of the Clover and More pack. Okay, I'm going to join into the top of the first, like the top of the puff stitch. Not the chain over here, the top of the actual puff stitch. That's where we're going to join. Then I'm going to tell you how we're going to start round two, and then you're going to do your guesses, and then I'm going to keep crocheting, and then we will pull a winner after I finish the row. Okay, so join and chain one. Now, let me show you. If you look, at, if you're doing multiple things, this is a good time to kind of give me your full attention for a second. If you struggle with your seam, and this works for any of my Claire Bun Beanies, my Claire Cozy, my Double Brim Claire Bun Beanie, the Claire Coffee Cozy, or any other Claire patterns that I will release in 2023. If your seam does not go in a straight line, can you see how that one is right in a straight line like that? If yours goes at an angle, or if it's conky wampus, it's because of, this is dishy cotton, it's because of your starting puff. It's because of where you put your starting puff. That's going to differentiate where your seam goes. So we are going to put our starting puff for round two in this first chain one space after we did our first puff. This is where the starting puff is going to go. And then our last puff is going to go right up next to our chain. And then for row three, our first puff is going to go right up next to our chain. And I will show you. So we alternate between all the way over here or right up next to our chain based on which row that we're in. And when you do that, it makes your seam nice and straight up the back. Everybody loves conky wampus. Okay, now we're going to do another giveaway while I do round two of this, row two of this pattern. This time we are giving away one of the peace sign stickers. This is open internationally. It doesn't cost me hardly anything to send these internationally. It's like a dollar fifty to send it to get a stamp. So it's no big deal. You can enter no matter which area that you are in. Oh, I'm so glad she liked it. Go ahead and start your guesses. Numbers 1 through 126. We've already done 63. So while you are guessing, I will be making this this row here, which is technically row three of our body because the first row was a single crochet row. And you can you'll be able to tell when I'm about to say stop because I will be about finished with the round the row. So perfect perfect little situation here. Love the guesses, keep them coming. One guess per giveaway, please. Unless you see that somebody guessed the same number as you before you did, then you can guess again. Because if you both guess the same number, the first person to guess it is going to be the winner. So if you see that your number came through after somebody else's number and you had the same number, you're welcome to try again. But one entry, please. One legit entry. We are almost done with our 16 puffs for this row. I'm so used to saying round. This row. One guess, one entry per giveaway. We have four giveaways during a live. We've already done one. We got three left. This is number two. You may have one entry to that. 
and Sierra is on it. So if you see somebody doing multiple entries, don't worry about it. Sierra's got it under control. Okay, so now my last puff stitch is going to go in this space, which is very close to my starting chain. It's gonna hug the starting chain from the right side. See how this one hugs the starting chain from the left side? Can you see the chain is on the, well, the chain is on the right side of my puff. My puff is on the left side of my chain. This one's puff is going to be on the right side of the chain, the chain up one. Okay, so I'm gonna do my last puff and we're gonna count to 10. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, we're gonna say stop, S-T-O-P, enter, and then we're gonna grab one. Ready, here we go, not looking, not looking. Let's go with this one. 115, 115, oh, 38 hopped out. 115 is the winner. Congratulations, 115. Now I'm going to join into the top of our first puff stitch. This is the top of our first puff stitch. No, that's the chain one. We're joining right here. That is our chain. Yeah, that's the top of our puff stitch, I'm pretty sure, because this is our chain one. So that is, what did I do? Did I chain two accidentally? Okay, we're gonna join right here. I don't know what's going on, but we'll, we'll pay more attention for the next round. We'll pay attention here. Join here, should be near the top of your puff. Then we're gonna chain one. I just chained one. I'm being very mindful to not chain two. Okay, now for the next row, which is row four, our third row of puffs, we're going to put our first puff stitch right up next to our starting chain, just right there. So that's where our first puff stitch is gonna go. And we're gonna puff all the way around, again, for a total of 16. Mommy Bloom, congratulations! Oh, went right through my puff stitch. And after this row, I will see. I think there's five total rows of puffs. So um, six total rows of body. I can't remember. If you need to make your Claire Cozy taller... But your, your hook and yarn combo, you're loving, but you just need it to be a little bit taller. There's a couple different options that you have at your, at your disposal to make it taller. One, you can add another row of puff stitches before we do the decrease row. So another one of these 16 puffs in a row puff stitches before the decrease row. That's going to give you about half an inch length added to your cozy. Or you can add stitches in your starting chain and then in your brim so you could have eight single crochets per row instead of seven if you want it. and that would just make it a smidgy bit a smidgy bit bigger so you can go either way depending upon if you need yours to be a smidgy bit bigger or significantly bigger you can add puff stitch rows or you can add brim rows we are almost done then i'm going to double check the pattern Three and four. I do like how this color is showing up on camera. Okay, so we're going to join into the top of our first puff stitch, which is all the way over here. We're going to join right there. And then we're going to just chain one, not two. There's a, there's a join. I'm just going to pretend that's not there. So now we're going to make our first puff stitch in the next row, which is row five, and it's going to be all the way over here. So you're alternating back and forth where your first puff is going to go. That is going to be, it is named, so the Claire Bun Beanie was named after Claire, the character in Lost. I also have a Kate Bun Beanie and a Juliet Bun Beanie, and this was inspired by the Claire Bun Beanie, so if so facto, it's named after the character Claire from the show Lost. Okay, we're going to insert our hook. We're going to yarn over and insert our hook all the way over here. And I'm going to do a puff stitch. And then I'm going to pay very close attention to what it's going to look like at the top. Because I was confused for when I joined the last time. So I'm doing a regular puff, pull through all. Yes, see how the top of my puff stitch looks like I chained two right here? 
I didn't. That's just where the top of the puff stitch falls. Then we're going to chain one to secure it. And you can totally see that that is the top of our puff stitch. That is where you join at the end of the row. So we are, we are all on the right track. So you're doing other clear projects in 2023? Spoiler alert! <laughs> you guys want to like, do you want to really know what I'm creating? Or do you want to be surprised? Because it will be about a year. If that tells you anything. That's a big hint. It will be about a year before I'm able to release the pattern that I'm thinking about. That will be a Claire inspired pattern. I want to know. Any guesses? Tell us. Do we have any guesses? I was thinking the same thing. Spoilers, please. Do we have any guesses? Claire blanket. Nope. Not a blanket. It is a seasonal pattern. What season are we in right now? It is a seasonal pattern. We have a Claire hat. It's the Claire bun beanie. It is a stocking! Good guess, Pink Cedar! I've got a Claire stocking in the works. I also have a mind for a Claire um, sweater, but I've never designed a sweater before. So you could totally do a Santa hat with the Claire bun beanie really easily, but it's definitely a stocking that I have that I'm working on that I actually was hoping to get. No, it is a bun beanie, but there's also a closed version too of the Claire, the Claire beanie. They're both on my pat. Well, it's in the bun beanie pattern on my blog. And if you buy the PDF, you get the instructions for both. So we're going to join into the top of our first puff stitch. I'm working on a Christmas tree skirt pattern. I was hoping to have it live by this year too, and it just did not work. It's not Claire inspired though, but it is inspired by some of my other designs. I was hoping to have it done and it just did not work, but I will have it. Oh yeah, a scarf. I have a cow. Make a clear cow that it's really pretty, but we could definitely do a scarf too. Let's see how many rows of puffs that we need before. So five total rows of puffs. One, two, three, four. One more row, and then we'll do our decreases. We are almost done, friends. Oh, we are about at an hour. It's probably going to start getting weird and cut me off again. Ugh. I hate going over an hour. I really want to keep them under an hour, but I can't stop chatting with you guys. <laughs> I'm so glad you like my designs. Okay. I'm going to try to close this up as fast as I can. After this, we have a decrease row, and then we have two rows of single crochets, and then they're done. So let's... After this, we'll do another giveaway, and then I will end with a giveaway. So let me finish this for just a second. I wasn't chatting it would be done by now just so we all know that this is an under an hour project I'm just a chitty chatter but I really enjoy talking to you guys it's very good for my mental health like you don't even understand it's like like mental health medicine on my phone it is exactly what I need and I love you dearly for being here because if you weren't here I would be talking to myself and that would probably be bad for my mental health. <laughs> but show up till you blow up, baby. I would still be sitting here talking to myself all day long. Okay, almost done. We're going to join into the top of our first puff stitch. If the internet gets weird because it cuts me off in an hour, I will restart. And then we're going to chain one. Our next row is a decrease row. And I believe we're just going to decrease one time. So... Puff stitch in the first chain one space, which is over here. Two, three, and four, and chain one. Now we're going to decrease over these next two chain one spaces. So right where my fingertips are sticking out, that's where our decrease is going to go. And we're just going to put one puff stitch here instead of two normally. And it's going to help shape our cozy. So we're to make a decrease puff stitch... Puff stitch decrease. We're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the first space, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, just like normal, but we're only going to do that three times. That's two, and then that's three, and then we're going to do it again over here on the other one. So yarn over into the next chain one space, pull up a loop. That's one, that's two, and that's three. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through all these loops on our hook. 
to give us our decrease and we took what was two stitches and made it one chain one to secure it and then we're just going to continue to single crochet all the way around so we're just doing one decrease to drop us down from 15, 16 puff stitches to 15 puff stitches let's do another giveaway this time is going to be the pdf again so let's do one more pdf giveaway and then i have a, the next prize is a surprise the last one I have not given away one of these yet, so the last one's a surprise. But go ahead and start putting in your questions. Here's the rules for anybody that's just jumping in. Numbers are 1 through 126. These two have already been chosen. One guess per giveaway. Unless you accidentally post a number that someone else already posted and you just saw it and you need to post a second number. And Sierra is policing the rule followers. So don't worry about that. It is all handled, I promise. 1 through 126. Then I'm going to count to 10. And then I'm going to type the word stop in the comments. Any number guessed after my word stop gets typed and submitted will not count. We have to have a cutoff line somewhere. I really hate it. Makes me very sad for the people whose numbers come in right after my freaking stop. That makes me very sad. But we have to have a cutoff somewhere or we would never know who's the winner. So the last one is going to go right in this space next to my chain one. I hope that helped clear up any confusion if you've had for any of my puff stitch patterns about your seam. Hopefully that helped a little bit. Joining to the top of our first puff stitch. Now I'm going to count to 10 and chain 1, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ava! Hang on, Ava wanted to draw and I haven't been letting her. Ava! You, you want to draw? You want to draw the prize? You want to draw the prize? Okay, they can only see your hands. This this phone can see your body, though. They can, this can see your body. This can see your hands. This is the live one. So stick your hand in there. Don't look. Look at me. Okay, stick your hand in there and wall them around and pick one. There you go. Pick one and then show it to the camera. Up higher. There you go. What number is that? 64. 64. Good job. Is that all that you wanted to do? Give me a holler at you for the next one. Mm. We got yeah. one more. Okay, I'll holler at you, so yeah, be listening. I'm what? 64. What? There's nothing to see. I think I forgot to type in stop. I'm sorry. I got distracted. But anyway, 64 is the winner. Sierra is already on it looking for who got the closest. It'll take, oh, 63 and 64. <laughs> That's crazy. Wait, put 64 below 63. You got it. There we go. That makes more sense. Thank you. Logical. Logic here. Okay, I'm, I'll holler at you when it's time. Be close to the door. I am. I'm in the living room covering. Mm. Okay, now we are going to row eight is a single crochet row. So we only have 30 single crochets now because of the decrease that we did. So we're going to single crochet one time in each stitch around in those chain spaces. So we're going to go in here and then in here and then in here and then on top. So all the way around for 30 single crochets. One, it looks like Instagram didn't cut us off. Two, and this time I am going in the actual stitch. I'm not going around the stitch. I'm going in it. Three, four, I'm going to do that all the way around. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Was the winner chosen already? Did I miss it? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Almost there. Did I miss the, the winner? 21, 22, 23. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. And then my last one is going to go right on top of that last puff right there for 30. Oh, yay! We have a winner! 
Congratulations, you win the PDF. Sorry I had to go kind of quick. Simply live in good co. I was running out of time. Okay, chain one. And then we have one more row left. It is row nine. We're just going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around. One more time for row nine. And then this puppy is complete. We can cut our yarn, tie in our tails, add any tags or patches or felties that you might have. This is Dishy Cotton by I Love or by We Crochet in the color um, Clarity is what it's called. I love how these look. And these are, I have a pile of a few of these that are already made that I keep as my random gifts for people because I like to bless people, even if it's just little small thoughts like this. Because, um, like, maybe it's somebody's birthday that I didn't know about or Ava's teacher's anniversary or something crazy. And then I'm like, oh, I can, I can gift them something. So I try to have some on hand. Also, if I had a customer that spent, like, a ton of money, I could send them one as a thank you for spending so much money with me. Um, but I like to just have them on hand. <laughs> I will tell her you said thank you. She will appreciate that. Okay, we're going to join into the top of our first single crochet. And now our Claire Cozy is complete. So let's cut our yarn, leaving a tail long enough to sew in. I will be sewing them in off camera, but it's just like I've done in the previous lives with my tapestry needle, making sure to go in, in through the fibers of the stitches. But how cute is this? Okay, and now we are going to just show you what it looks like on a cup. It's hard to put them on a cup when it's not full of coffee. <laughs> okay. Okay, there we go. Once it's got some, some weight in there, it's easier to do. But look at that. How cute is that? This is the medium version from Starbucks. If you needed a size comparison, there is some space down here. So I, these do fit a tall cup, but it's like really close to the brim like this. So if you, if you wanted yours to be specific for a tall cup, you could do less up here if you wanted to. But I think this is fine. You could also kind of like squish it closer together, right? You can just control it. There's a lot of give with crochet things. Also, look what I bought from the Dollar Tree. I got these in a four pack for $1.25. Look how cute these are. Now, the, today was the first day opening them, and they have these stickies on the back, which I will not be using. But if I can rip this off and hot glue him to the center, isn't that precious? He is not machine washable. He is just, I, I was trying to investigate and figure out, I think he's just little felt stickers stuck together. So if you were going to wash this guy, you would definitely want to reinforce him with some hot glue or even sew. And you're going to have to sew around all of his little features. So if you're going to use this guy, just know he is not machine washable and he will probably fall apart in the washer. But wouldn't he be so cute? On a Claire Cozy like that. $1.25. I was like, yeah, I'll buy them. I mean, maybe it's just your... Look at this guy. He's he's seen better days. <laughs> he's a little conky wampus. This one looks... His beard looks like it's blowing in the wind. And he's like running this way. You see? But I thought for $1.25, I would grab them. They didn't have any other characters. Or I would have got them too. They just have little Santa Clauses. This little button nose. Little cutie patootie. Okay, let's turn this guy around and get ready for our goodbyes. Hello, hello. Thanks for being here. Thanks for staying this late. We have one more giveaway that we'll do in just a hot second. Oh, my back. Ugh. Hey, that's okay. Oh, the person that won, I can't pronounce their name, but they said thank you. It's like survey or Carve. You can put their shirts on in here if you want. You're not going to bother me. I love you. Thank you for being considerate. How was the live? Are we all about the Claire Cozies? I think they make great Christmas gifts. You could put a Starbucks gift card. You could put, like I said, packs of tea or gift them with a mug, like an at-home mug. For in this be for like their to-go cup situation. There's so many different things you can do with these. They make great teacher's gifts. You can get really creative with the color combinations that you do. I will be making one that is red with faux fur for the brim with white to look like a Santa coffee cozy. You could do the same with green. I, I think you're right. I think you should take them out. Go on out. Go on. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Come on, Tanner. Let's go by Daddy. Oh, I know. I know. I'm just telling Tanner that to get him out of here. Go on. 
Ava, it's almost time to do the drawing. Okay. Sorry, guys. Anyways, what was I saying? What was I saying? Oh, to make a Santa one with the faux fur, the faux fur that I used in the, um, oh, I said Grinch. You could do lime green cotton for the body and then green faux fur for the top and do a Grinch inspired one. You could put like a little heart applique on it. That would be so cute. Literally so many different things you can do with these. Like maybe challenge yourself to go on Pinterest and go to some sort of aesthetic board or something and find some inspiration for how you can replicate that aesthetic with the Claire Cozy and just... Exercise your brain. Give yourself some creativity space to just do something that the first thing that comes to you doesn't have to be on brand or on trend. It's just a, an exercise. And I bet you could come up with something really super fun for these. I really love this color. So if you need a color to add to your shop, this one would look gorgeous in photos and videos for your shop. And the better your photos, the more likely you're gonna get sales. So dishy in the color clarity. There will be a link in the description below on the replay on YouTube. So if you want to watch the replay, there is never before seen footage on the YouTube replay because I have another phone right there that is filming from a different angle. So that might be fun as well. Let's do our last giveaway, Ava. And the last giveaway is going to be a skein of yarn. Look at this. This would look really cool in the knitting machine or in any pattern where you work in the round because it is a printed pattern. This is a, it has been discontinued from Hobby Lobby like years ago, probably two or three years ago. And it is in the color called High Sierra Stripe. So we're gonna be giving away this skein of yarn. Open to a, in, in America. If you are outside of America and you win, if you would rather have a sticker or the PDF, that would be cheaper for me. But if you've got your heart set on this, I will still send you this. So we can talk about it in my email if you are in a different country from America. If you don't need to send this to you, I absolutely will. Totally fine. But if you want something else instead that happens to be a little bit cheaper on my end, totally fine too. So go ahead and start guessing 1 through 126. The numbers that have already been guessed are 63, 64, and 115. And then I'm going to let Miss Ava come pick the winner. Come on, Ava. I'm not going to put the, no the rules out there again. Hopefully, if you're just now tuning in, all you got to do is pick a number 1 through 126. When I type the word stop, I won't forget this time. Um, any number after that doesn't count. Please just submit one number unless you see that somebody else already guessed that number before you and then you want to guess another number. Then that's fine. But you only get one entry per giveaway. If she doesn't come in here, Ava Grace. And she's like, come in. Okay, so we're going to let her come. And then as soon as she starts shuffling, I will type in stop. You ready? Okay, here you go. Don't look at the number that you pick. Just look at that camera or something. Okay, I'm going to type in S-T-O-P. Here it comes. Post. Okay, let me see. Uh, what is it? 112 is the winner. But those are very close, very close to 115. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? 112 is the winner. Okay, good question. If you win, Sierra will reach out to you and I will need to know your name, your Instagram handle, what prize you won specifically. Say I won the PDF for the Claire Cozy, if that's what you won, and where I need to send it. So either your personal address or your email address. So it depends on where I need to send it. But 112 is the winner of the yarn. So let, it, let Sierra do her thing and she will choose the winner and she will let you know, well, she will find the winner and let you know who won. Ava's rocking her Christmas sweater. We're getting ready to have an ugly Christmas sweater party with our church friends. Theo has his on. Oh my gosh, Theo has his, his on. Show him your sweater, Theo. No way, hey, do another draw for the win. I'll take a sticker, girl. I'm in Canada. Did you win, JP? If you won and you don't want me to send you the yarn, I can send you a sticker. That's totally fine. Whoever won, I don't know. I'm going to wait till Sierra tells me. I love your live videos. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Yay! Oh, fantastic. They said, thanks, Ava girl. They like having you here. Beautiful thing. Okay, we are going to go. Okay, JP Creations, congrats. You are the winner. But I can send you the yarn, JP Creations. I do not care if you want the yarn. Um, I don't care to send it to you. But if you'd rather have a sticker or the PDF, I can send you that. Just let me know. Um, I sent an, a, an um, I think it was a Canadian friend. 
oh, that's pretty, a notebook yesterday and it cost me like $14 in shipping when it would have been better for me to have her go on Amazon and the can can Canadian Amazon and buy it and then I reimburse her. I didn't even think about it, but t you learn, you learn. Um, but it's, it's totally okay. I hope that she loves it anyway. Okay, we're gonna go get ready for our ugly Christmas sweater party. Thanks so much for being here. Go tell all of your friends. Maybe we can make tomorrow's live the biggest one yet. I appreciate each and every one of you. I truly feel like I'm chatting with my best friends. I'm not kidding. Like I'm not putting on a show for you. Like it, I feel like you are my soul sister and we are chatting it up. That is truly how I feel in my spirit. And I appreciate you dearly for being here. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. Get some selfish crochet. Maybe take a bubble bath. Whatever makes you happy. I hope you're able to do that today. And I will see you tomorrow for our live. I can't remember the time that it is. But if you are signed up to the Crochet Miss email list, you will get an email at 8 a.m. in the morning. See you guys later. I'm going to use this one as my, as my pose. Wait. Okay, <laughs> Okay, bye.